Hello, everyone, and welcome to Growing Together, a gardening podcast with me, John Lamb, and Don Kinsler, a lifelong gardener and the North Dakota State University Extension Horticulturist for Cass County. Don, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, and I'm looking forward to today's program because uh, we get to talk about houseplants, succulents, and cacti in particular. I know, and it's kind of a it's, it's a it's just, it's a world that I'm not as familiar with as like outdoor gardening. I don't do a whole lot for plants indoors, but it's it is really it's a it's a big thing, isn't it? It, it really is, you know. And I it, it kind of gives me the chance, especially in the winter time, to kind of exercise a person's uh, urge to grow something. And so, yeah, I enjoy house plants. Uh, gosh, and I think a lot of our homes just wouldn't be the same if you didn't have at least something growing inside. Yeah, and I should say that we do have some. Sam, Sam's much better. My girlfriend's much better at uh, taking care of the plants inside than than I am. So that's... You know, of course, that's one thing I love about the whole gardening aspect is there's something in it for everybody. Yeah. You know, there's lawn care, there's fruit growing, there's house plants. You know, some people do house plants. That is their gardening thing, and they don't uh, do anything else. And yet, uh, another nice thing about house plants is apartment dwellers, condo dwellers, uh, people that maybe don't have a yard in which to do other gardening can do their gardening in a house plant. It's a it's a very kind of a, uh, democratic, uh, or a, it's is. an equal ground, you know, <laughs> yes. a democracy for for uh, for for gardening. That's there a good that point. As long as you've got a window that gets some light, you can grow something. Yes, you know, I suppose even if you lived in a place that was windowless, yeah, I can't imagine that. But if there was. Plant lights. If you, if, would if you come lived to in a place rescue. without a window, you would need plants. You, you, <laughs> you would need something in there to cheer <laughs> good, you good, up. Good point. So, why are uh, cacti, cacti? We should I keep wanting to say cactuses. You know, hey, I okay. did some looking at that because okay. you know I would find myself saying cactuses, r- referring to the plural of cactuses, yeah. cactuses, and I thought uh, I was I was kind of self conscious because I thought, well, I suppose I should be calling them cacti, but it just didn't always roll off my tongue the way cactuses did. So I did a little checking, and apparently, cactuses is appropriate now. Okay. Yeah. So if uh, by chance we forget to say cacti, I think we're okay, John. We're not sliding uh, any. (laughs) Right. But so why are cacti, cactuses, and succulents, what what are some thoughts for why they are so popular? Because we've really seen a a, a lot of more popularity of them. The popularity certainly has grown over the last decade or so. Oh, it really has. And I think a couple of reasons why they are so popular, they're a little more forgiving of neglect than some plants because just by nature, and we'll talk about kind of the the nature and the native forms of some of these, but just by nature, in nature, they don't get as much water and they don't get as much fertility because they grow in soil that isn't as fertile. And so they're more accustomed and adapted to our indoor growing conditions, and so they do better for people. And so sometimes people that maybe don't have a, a whole history of experience growing plants, this is a good spot to start because neglect sometimes is exactly what uh, they like. And so I think you know some people that maybe aren't you know, that maybe don't like to monitor their plants on a regular basis. Uh, cacti give a person something to grow, you know, even if occasionally you forget yeah. the water. It's something I suppose if you're somebody who likes to go on vacations, you know, you can you can you can have a cacti around and you can have succulents around and you can <laughs> yes. go for a go for you, a period of time and come yes. back. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you had an entire succulent collection, you could go on vacation probably up to a three-week vacation and not really have to have somebody come in and, and uh, sit your houseplants. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is that, um, you know, kind of when did they, succulents and, and cactuses, when did they become kind of popular? And they, they've kind of been around for, they've well, they've certainly, they're in nature. They've been around for a long time. But I've seen, one of the things I saw is that uh, one of the, theories was that after the Great Recession, there was this kind of boom in succulents and cacti because for people who uh, either suffered financially there or that saw that in their future, there wasn't, especially younger people, there wasn't maybe that they wouldn't have the same life that their parents did. They wouldn't be able to own a house at the the same age that their parents did. So they wouldn't be able to have an out, an outdoor garden. It was their way of having some kind of ownership to, to get into cactuses. And also if you wanted to put off having a family or if you weren't going to be having a family, it gives you something to care for and kind of nurture in that way. You know, that's a really good point. 
And um, so also, you know, kind of looking back even a little farther than that, I was trying to kind of recall myself when the cacti and succulents kind of became most popular. Now, uh, my mom had lots of house plants, and my grandmother. I don't remember them having, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, the 50s or before. <clears throat> uh, I don't remember having them having cacti or succulents, other than medicine plant, the aloe. Okay. Yeah. I remember mom having one of those, you know, if we got an owie, yeah, yep. they, the out came the, you know, a chunk of the medicine plant, but I don't remember them having cacti. Snake plant, I do yep. remember them having snake plant, which is a cacti, but it seems somewhere along the 70s or so, maybe they started becoming more popular. As a child of the 70s, I remember we had small cactuses and small, there were some right. small succulents. Were they in a macrame hanger hanging from the corner of the living room ceiling? We, we didn't have one in the, they were in the kitchen, we didn't which either, had, a, I, had a west face. They were in all window. the magazines. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but you did see that. And now that whole, that kind of aesthetic is very much back in now, that that kind of decor idea. And that, exactly. that look but, is very, very big again. Exactly. But, you know, it's interesting. I think uh, you're right with that great uh, recession when houseplants, and it's interesting, they do give you something to care for, yeah. and they do so well. Because another reason why they do so well in our homes is because they like dry air. And so in the wintertime, our furnace-dried air is well-suited to cacti when some of the other houseplants suffer from that lack of humidity. And one of the other things I saw is that the, you know, kind of tying into that boom, that kind of when this started, uh, the, that in 2021, the market for succulents was estimated to be over three billion dollars, which is which is it's yeah, on 3 itself billion in twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty one, and it was estimated that by twenty thirty, so in nine years, it would be over twelve billion. So wow. you're talking almost four, you know, a four time growth there. That's that's really impressive. That's a lot of plants. That's a lot of plants, and that's also it's a lot of that's a lot of money. So they, you can get it. Then that's when you look even further. Now there's because there's been such this boom of of uh, succulents and cacti, now there are questions about uh, poaching out of the wild, uh, oh. thefts of thefts of of cactuses and succulents out of areas oh, where they're protected. Because yeah, they're worth money. Yeah, because uh, one of the big air areas is uh, South Africa. Is a big area. Like what we were talking about too is that well, we'll get into where they come from, but the yeah that that it's become a become a Big business for some people to think that they can, you know, wow. kind of get away with something there. So yeah, it's yeah, a, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a it's there's a lot of things to unpack there with succulents. Yeah, interesting. You know, it's always fun for me to go visit the house plant stores, the garden centers, because when you take a look at all the varieties of cacti and succulents that there are, it's amazing. I'm happy to see that many new types being offered for sale. It would be interesting to talk to a garden center and see, uh, you know, in the between, let's say, November and March, April, even like what percentage of their house plant sales are succulents? That would be interesting over over the kind of the winter months, you know, away from kind of the outdoor, or even look year long the indoor plants with succulents but let's talk about that so where where do they where do succulents and cacti come from are they all kind of desert rocky areas or do they come you know, from different places i think a lot of us when we think of a cacti succulent we automatically think of the desert you know yeah. a plant uh, you know with spines uh, growing out in the middle of a desert somewhere with nothing else around and uh, but uh, there are two types of cacti in uh, nature. One, of course, is that desert type, cacti, succulent. And I should mention, okay, we, you know, we talked about cacti, succulent. Well, what, what's kind of the difference? Are they interchangeable, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, the botanists kind of call the whole group, uh, the umbrella term is a succulent. Okay. Uh, and a succulent meaning it has a very waxy coating. Uh, succulent means that uh, it's got a lot of juice inside because that's how they conserve their water, their moisture. And so they tend to have more interior surface and less exterior surface, if that makes sense. You know, they're thicker, you know, and they don't have as much outer surface, so there's less surface to evaporate water. So, you know, th you think of some of the uh, cactus in the desert, you know, they're big rounded type things. And uh, and so they don't really have leaves. So the umbrella term is kind of that succulent, waxy coating, you know, kind of jelly-like inside. And uh, then kind of a subgroup 
are the cactuses, which uh, tend to have spines. There, I said it, didn't I? Cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, probably tend to more have spines and kind of what we think of as the actual cactus. Um, but, you know, the terms have come to be used interchangeably. So, you know, I don't think anybody's going to uh, look askance at you if you use the term um, such as that. So, so it is interesting. And they're found worldwide all these different species, and there's about 2,000 species that are kind of grouped into that succulent cacti group. And it's interesting. Okay, I mentioned that some of the cactuses that we think of are the desert-type cactuses, but also there are tropical. There are ones found in the tropics. Now, we don't always think of a cactus as growing in like a rainforest, but Christmas cactus Okay. The Christmas cactus and Thanksgiving cactus, those are tropical cactus, and they don't grow out in the sandy desert, but instead they're in the tropics, and in nature they grow from trees, you know, where tree branches catch leaves and stuff, and that leaf start, leaves start to kind of mold a little bit and turn into a humus. And so you find the Christmas cactus growing in these crotches of tree branches, you know, and then they hang down gracefully. Uh, you know, just think if they were kind of a ground type cactus, they just kind of have to, I don't know, grow outwards. But, you know, can you picture a tropical tree with a Christmas yes. cactus hanging down just naturally like that? And so these native um, habitats give us a clue as to what they need. For example, the Christmas cactus likes a more humusy um peat-based potting mix, whereas the desert-type cactus, as we talk, we'll talk, we talk about later, but they like a more sandy, desert-like soil mix. So knowing the key to those, um, also the Christmas cactus likes more humidity. If it doesn't get enough humidity, the buds will fall off. The desert-type cacti will like dry air. And so it's interesting. So worldwide, 2,000 species. The neat thing when I did a little investigating is – of those 2,000 species considered into this group, all of them are native, uh, all of those except one species, but I couldn't find which species it is, all of those are native to the Americas. Oh, really? You know, many of these species are, you know, found worldwide, but uh, in uh, North America, South America, we can find 1,999 of those species, and now it's going to bother me until I find <laughs> which of those one species isn't <laughs> native. You know, talking about the uh, the Christmas cactus, and you brought up the Thanksgiving cactus with this season here now, too, there's an Easter cactus, too, right? Yes. And would that grow right. the same kind of way, like growing out of yep. the crotch the of the same, tree? Yep, same type of thing. Yep, okay. it's, it's a different species. Each of those are different species, and basically they were nicknamed because they tend to bloom about those period. Although um, Facebook is full of things with people's uh, Thanksgiving cactus blooming in uh, March, you know, so they're triggered by uh, they're triggered more by temperature and light levels than they are necessarily by, by a certain season. All right. Well, let's take a quick little break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about succulents and cacti. When you can't make it to City Hall or school board meetings, local journalists from Inform.com will be there to report the facts and get your questions answered. Local news works for you. Stay up to date at Inform.com. All right, we're back and we're talking succulents this week. And so, Don, what, what, are, some, what are some of the kind we've talked about, you know, kind of like the, the succulents, while well, they've boomed over the last decade or so, they've been around for a long time. So as a longtime gardener yourself, what kinds have you grown? Well, I enjoy a snake plant. You okay. know, it's interesting. Snake plant, also called Sansevieria, a uh, sword plant. Uh, another nickname is mother-in-law's tongue. You know, so I had a, a great mother-in-law. These, so. these, these are the ones that grow very upright. The yes, leaf, very, uh, yeah. They uh, look like uh, leaves, but are they technically you know, leaves? sword plant uh, yeah. with a sword-like, sword-shaped leaves are quite uh, dramatic. And um, so anyway, they do very, very well. And they've got that very thick coating and yeah, they're beautiful. So that's always been one of my favorites. And there are different color shades of those, so they do very nicely. And then, of course, I've got medicine plant, the aloe vera, and a couple of other types of aloe also. 
I don't have any of the cactus that have spines on currently. Um, you know, I got to tell you a little story about something that happened to me in 1979. I, I was a student at NDSU, and we were getting ready for a big horticulture open house. And in the NDSU horticulture greenhouses, uh, there was a room devoted to orchids and a room devoted to tropical plants and a room devoted to cactus. And so when we were getting ready for this horticulture open house, we were moving a lot of these plants into kind of a nice display area. And so I was moving a large barrel cactus, uh, quite large, I don't know, I suppose it was almost two feet in diameter, big pot, big rounded cactus. But uh, that one was also called a fish hook cactus because it had, it was covered, the outer surface was covered with these uh, very sharp prongs in the shape of a fish hook. And so while I was trying to tote this uh, large barrel cactus, uh, one of the hooks caught my jeans. And it not only tore my jeans, but it, uh, it broke the skin. And to this very day, I have a scar, a little scar, from that fishhook cactus. Oh. And so anyway, but that brings up the point, why are some of these so wicked? And of course, that's uh, nature's, uh, Mother Nature's way of protecting them from predators. Because oh. what predator is going to go and take a bite out of a big barrel fishhook cactus if its tongue is going to get caught by these sharp barbs? So it's fascinating the way that Mother Nature has endowed some of these cactus with a protection protection. And so that's usually why there are some of them are covered with uh, spikes like that. And did that kind of turn you off? Is that why you don't have any cactus currently? <laughs> I was wondering if you were kind of thinking about that. They're... Well, you know, I, I kind of had my fill of the barrel cactus, <laughs> but you know, I wouldn't mind having some of those. There's, oh, there's so many. Uh, there's one called an old man cactus. Have you seen that That sounds one? like us. No, but yeah, that's perfect yeah. for us. Old man cactus. That's, that's, uh, I should get that. But anyway, the outer covering of it is with wispy gray hair. Oh. On that. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to look that up. It's it's unique. And so, yeah, I want to increase. And that's one thing I love is that uh, gardeners are rarely done learning, uh, collecting plants. And so, yeah, now I want to get me one of those. Yeah. So how how about, let's talk about care for plants and care for succulents, we should say. What, what's the, what's the, what are some tips for, for growing and taking care of the succulents? A, a person could probably summarize it in that... And, of course, thinking back to their native uh, habitat, um, a person could probably summarize it in that they require less water than some plants. Uh, They also... um, uh, they also don't require as much fertilizer because some of these are native. Many of these are native in the deserts where the soil isn't that rich. And then also they do need lots of light because uh, where most of these are native, they're getting pretty good light, you know, out in the middle of the desert. And also the tropical ones, the sun and day length in the tropics is fairly intense. I was going to say, like even for the Christmas cactus, yeah, the, because they're it in would the, be in, in the forest? canopy, you know, okay. it would be kind of under the canopy, but because the tropical sun is so intense, it kind of needs that uh, buffering a little bit. Okay. And uh, so uh, that that would kind of be um, to summarize that up. But if we kind of take a look at some of those points, okay. So a bright sunny window, uh, especially important in the winter. You know, as our the sun becomes less intense and uh, lower on the horizon, especially in the winter, they're going to want some direct sunlight. If you've got them in a window, now as our summer sun becomes more intense, if it was in that same bright sunny window, that might be a little too intense. Yeah. So a person needs to watch in the full brunt of the summer sun, maybe move them off a little bit to the side or uh, under plant lights would work very, very well too. How, so, how, what, what height should we get? Because we were just talking about last week about, yeah, seedlings. about seedlings. We really only want them about two inches. Two. Exactly. Yeah. How but, about for um, cactus, succulents, yeah. and other house plants, really within about six to 12 inches. Okay. You know, you don't maybe need those quite as close. And regular plant lights uh, work well. Either the, I, I like the longer uh, linear tubes rather than a round bulb because the longer linear tubes, I could group plants. I could group succulents under those, whereas the round bulb, you know, they're more for one or two more of a plants. Spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so to give them plenty of good light, it would be important for them to be 
at least within 6 to 12 inches of that light. And it could be the white LED lights, uh, the purplish plant lights. All of those will work quite well. And of course, the next thing that we would look at is what type of potting mix do these need? So if it's a desert type cactus, then we want to imitate that desert type soil, which is primarily sand. So if you want to kind of make your own home uh, home brew, you know, if, you, if you've got some potting mix on hand, add about equal parts of that and equal parts sand to okay. that. You know, even like the tubes of playground sand would probably work okay for that. And um, so that's the desert type cactus. Oh, I should mention too, garden centers sell special little bags of cactus and succulent soil. That, that works beautifully. It already has that aggregate in it, so you don't have to go and get a tube of playground sand or anything. So uh, the ready-made mix is specially tailored. That's, that's kind of my preferred you know, rather than make mixing your own, just go and get a bag of the, yeah. the the stuff that's for that. If it's a tropical type cactus or succulent, like the Christmas cactus, then by nature they want a potting mix that's a little more high in peat moss or other composty, humusy type things, organic matter. So then, um, for example, our Christmas cactus grows very well just in some of the name brand like miracle Grow potting mix or those recommended by your local garden centers. So we look at two different native origins needing kind of two different types of soil mix on that. How about like, you know, for where to plant them? Like in kind of what kind of, because you see, especially with succulents now, people are very creative in how they display them and show them and, and what they put them in. Exactly. You, know, you see them in coffee cups, you see them. Yeah. So what, where should we be planting them? What's, what's Yeah, good? so sometimes yeah. you'll see a kind of a very big, almost a big teacup, you know, yeah. with some neat succulents in. And th there is a problem in that if it doesn't have a drainage hole. Oh, now you okay. can do a you you can do Google on how to uh, drill a drainage hole in ceramic without cracking the thing. So you can kind of look up how to do that. But boy, the preferred really is to uh, to have drainage holes. Now, if you have one of those neat kind of uh, ceramic type uh, containers, rather than planting directly in that, there's another way. Use a pot with a drainage hole that would just fit inside that decorative container. Because then when you okay. water, oh, and we'll talk about water in a minute, when you water that succulent, um, you'll see if what, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see if water drains out the bottom and collects in that decorative container, you can dump out that excess. Whereas if you don't have that inner pot and you just pot up directly into this decorative container, uh, what if water collects in the bottom of that? What if you water a little too much? And down in the bottom there, that water uh, could cause root rot to start because uh, many of these cactus don't like excess water. So there's more chance of root rot. So in a decorative container, you might tend to just put a little, little on at a time, but that can be dangerous too uh, when we talk about watering. So I really encourage... Um, containers with drainage. And if you can't do that, um, for example, if, if somebody gives you a really neat uh, mug and you want to plant a cactus in it, well, maybe look for a, a clay pot with a drainage hole that fits just perfectly inside. Okay. And of course, then that leads us right into the watering. Now, yeah. um, watering, okay, we mentioned that uh, cactus succulents, as a rule, don't need that much water because they've got a waxy coating that in nature uh, just allows them to keep water inside and they don't need that, they don't need or get that much water. And so the rule of thumb, though, is anytime you do water succulent, water the entire soil mix potting mix and allow some to drain through the bottom. And the reason for that is, you know, our waters are full of um, minerals, chemicals, maybe there's fluorine in it, maybe chlorine, or even well water has salts in. And if we're putting on just a little bit of water each time, you're never leaching those salts out. You're never washing those salts out the bottom. So the reason for watering enough to, to have some drain out the bottom drainage is you're washing those salts out through the soil. And those salts can cause root problems. Uh, they, they start to burn the roots as they accumulate. And so 
So it's important to add enough so that some drains out. So that's where the drainage hole is important or putting a, a pot in a pot so that anytime that drainage, you can dump that out. And so very important. Uh, so rather than putting on a little bit at a time, it, water thoroughly, but then let the, uh, the the interval between waterings can go quite quite a ways. That the potting mix should really dry out. So how often does that mean? Well, it depends on your situation inside the home. Um, in the forum garden column a few weeks ago, I featured someone's um, snake plant. They said they only have to water it once about every three weeks. Uh, other people in similar situations need to water their succulents maybe every 10 days. So it will depend. Um, with succulents, though, it, you're probably better to err on the dry side. You know, they're rarely going to uh, suffer from lack of water just because they've got that natural inclination to resist uh, drying out. And so if you're kind of wondering, is it ready to water yet? Yeah, pretty soon you learn you you learn your plants, you know. Yeah. Uh, but if if a plant is new to you, then uh, err on the dry side. If you're kind of wondering, or if you dig down with your finger on a cactus or succulent, if you feel moisture down at your fingertip, uh, then don't water because there's let enough be. there. Let let it be. Yep, exactly. And uh, one thing you do want to watch, though, is keep an eye on the outer surface of the cactus or succulent. They'll let you know if they are suffering from lack of water. They'll start to wither or get a little wrinkly on the outer skin. Okay. And that's a sign that they are actually starting to suffer from lack of water. So similar to wilting in other plants. Exactly. You know, it's kind of a sign to— Yep. Exactly. Yeah, where a piece lily lets you know, because that'll just be drooping. Yep. Uh, cacti and succulents will get a little wrinkly on the outer surface. And um, also, I should mention that the the yearly cycle of a cactus dictates how often to water too. For example, during the longer days, brighter days of spring and summer, those cacti are triggered into a little more growth. So then uh, they need a little more water. So during the spring, summer, early fall, they will usually need a little more water, um, you know, a frequency. And, um, but in the winter time, when our light levels are lower, then uh, the interval should be longer in between waterings. Although if you're growing it strictly under a plant light, then of course that's more consistent all year long. Yeah. You know, when you're talking about, uh, especially like cactuses growing more in the summer and, and earlier when we were talking about the kinds of pots, you know, the, how people get creative with putting some succulents in, you know, uh, teacups or things like that. I suppose one of the other big appeals of uh, cactus uh, succulents, you know, uh, is that they're, they won't grow, there's, there's not, they're not going to outgrow probably a lot of things like their their growth their size that they get to is relatively modest isn't it i mean yeah, you're not going to see it's a good point John. you're not going to see something that's going to shoot up and every every year you're going to have to repot it so i suppose that's kind of another appeal for for some people is that space wise you know what you're getting into that's a good point it's not what they aren't one of those rapid growers that you're going to have to repot once a year or cut it back because it's kind of outgrown and or worry about the roots being wrapped uh, yeah, around inside. Exactly, yeah. So that uh, also is one of the keys to um, them being so popular. And um, along those same lines, they don't require much fertilizer because they're not growing so rapidly. They also don't require much fertilizer to maintain that. And some of the desert soils that they're growing in aren't that fertile anyway. But the times that we would fertilize would be like in spring as they're getting a little more light. If it's in a window, uh, we could give a fertilizer once or twice kind of during that early season type thing. And that would really be good enough for most of the desert type cactus. If it's a Christmas cactus, then uh, those of tropical origin, the soils may be a little more fertile and they benefit from about three or four times. So a Christmas cactus would enjoy being fertilized kind of, oh, I suppose March as the days are getting longer, March, April, and maybe once a month or so, until fall time and then stop fertilizing. And that should be enough to set the buds on those. And 
Uh, another another interesting point on cactus succulents is that they enjoy a summer vacation outdoors. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you've got a patio somewhere. Now, outdoors, even though they would enjoy uh, full sunshine at other times, you know, our sun is fairly intense in the middle of summer. You know, that July sun beats down pretty hot. And so if you do move cacti and succulents outside for summer vacation, uh, put them in a spot that is more a little more filtered sun. Because even though some a few of these species could be fine out in the middle of the Sahara Desert, you know, many of them uh, maybe wouldn't want that heat, uh, that hot sun. Plus, they've been growing indoors in our protected or sheltered condition. So we don't want to set them in the middle of the Sahara Desert yeah. right, right out of <laughs> our living room. Extreme variation yeah, Exactly. So outdoors in our area in the summertime, give it a little more filtered conditions. How about, uh, what are some tips to, if, if you can, not to ensure, but to try to get the best blooms out of, out of your You know, cactus? because it's fun. Now, most of the cactus and succulents will bloom. A snake plant, if, when they're happy, will send up a blossom. They're kind of neat, uh, quite fragrant too. And a lot of cactus, uh, sometimes you'll see people that uh, their, their barrel type cactus will send out some awesome blooms. And that that's fascinating. And that's what makes a good Facebook post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, well, what, what triggers some of that? So in nature, those blossoms are triggered uh, by cooler conditions, you know, kind of in the, the winter of the desert, uh, when things cool down a little bit, that coolness triggers cactuses to bloom. Well, so indoors, how do we do that? Well, if they're by a window, many of our windows are a little microclimate that gets cooler in the evening. So locating a cactus kind of close, not touching the glass, but uh, close to a window could give that cooler microclimate that could trigger a cactus into bloom. Usually it's kind of that, uh, wow, it actually happened you know, <laughs> type thing. And so, yeah, if you'd like to kind of experiment and see if your succulent would actually bloom, uh, locate it next to a window where during the wintertime it would get a little cooler and it might surprise you. All of this is really, really fun. There's a lot of things that we've talked about here. Anything that we're missing? Anything that we need? We should go over. You know, probably one of the nicest things about cacti and succulents, like other house plants, once you get them, buy a new one, bring it home. You you learn. You know, experience is a great teacher, and that kind of shows you how. And so, probably the only thing a person could probably mess up with a cactus or succulent is to be watering it too much. Is to love it too much. Uh, really, <laughs> ex exactly. Yeah, if you don't neglect it enough, that that could be a problem. These plants are survivors, and that's what that's, that's a good point for. And it. that's really kind of what you part of the appeal is too, is that. They can they can withstand. They don't need to be the constant nurturing. You don't need to be a helicopter plant parent here. <laughs> uh, they they will do not necessarily just fine on their own, but give them their space. And they yeah, I, I, I like that term. I'm chuckling over that term, survivor plants. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good term for those. Well, because they can, yeah, they can if if they can last in the in the in the summer. You know, one thing we didn't talk about here, and I'm just realizing now, I didn't put it in the notes. What's that? Uh, we should have talked about air plants. Do you have any thoughts on air plants? Yes. No, other than I want one. Okay. Yeah. You've never grown one. No. This but, is another but one when on I, Don's yes, list. Yes. Uh, yeah, my bucket list. Your bucket list. And because uh, when I go to the plant stores, I see these air plants kind of attached like to a board, just kind of for display and kind of growing there. Oh yeah, awesome. I, I got to say they they kind of they kind of freak me out a little bit because they just seem so they seem like an alien life form because <laughs> they, they, they don't do. because they they again they like when you said they attach themselves to a board. They just seem something there is not right because they're not rooted in something. They are not they're not they're not, you know, in a planter. They're they're floating up above you. You know they, that reminds me when I was a kid my mom had what was called an air fern. It was a dark green little a glob of fern, a very lacy, frilly thing, and it had no roots. And they were popular at the time, probably the 1960s, 70s, air fern. And, you know, it's funny. I haven't seen that since. Well, anyway, she just had it kind of setting in a teacup in no no potting mix or anything like that. I don't know if she missed it every once in a while. But that's interesting. It was different than the air plants that I see. Now I'll be curious. I'll have to look up and see what, what, what were these air ferns or was it just some little artificial thing that looked like a plant? But I think it was actually a plant. 
So if people have questions about how to take care of succulents, cacti, or if you even want to send Don pictures of your of your succulent collection or something that you've been particularly proud of or how you uniquely display it, uh, Don, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, it'd be fun to get some photos of um, blooming cacti yes. that have surprised you. Yeah, so send me an email, donald.kinsler, spelled K-I-N-Z-L-E-R, I always like to spell it in case it's easy to put an S in instead. Yeah, yeah. donald.kinsler at ndsu.edu. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Don, thanks again yeah, for coming thank by. Thank you, John, and thank you everyone for listening. 